With the West turning its back on Russian energy, the country must rethink its economic model. This was the message from the head of Russia's central bank Thursday at the St. Petersburg Economic Forum. Attendance at the annual business event is thinner this year, with Western countries absent due to the war in Ukraine. Even so, there was plenty to discuss. Moscow's rupture with the West looms over this year's forum. Large firms are noticeably absent from St. Petersburg. Organizers, meanwhile, are leaning in. Their motto this year, a new world, new possibilities. The reality is gloomier. Western sanctions are hitting everything from foreign reserves to material supplies critical for manufacturing. The head of Russia's central bank, Elvira Nabilina, expects the rift to be permanent. She pleaded for nothing less than an overhaul of Russia's economy. It's always been believed that export is our intrinsic value. We need to revisit and finally think about the fact that a significant part of production should work for the domestic market. A greater degree of processing, more creation of final products. Russia's message here? Not only is there no turning back from the economic breach with the West, but that Moscow too has levers that it can pull with gas deliveries, for example. Of course, Gazprom is reducing the volume of gas supplies to Europe. Many here say India and China can replace ties with the West. It's an outlook that economists outside of St. Petersburg say isn't so self-evident. Well, for an analysis of today's events, I'm joined now by Jakob Kierkegaard of the Peterson Institute for International Economics. So, Jakob, we heard the head of Russian energy giant Gazprom today saying, our product, our rules, of course, talking about uh, here in the wake of cutting gas flows to Europe for various reasons, for sanctions due to their demand for ruble payments. This is a pretty straightforward <laughs> statement he's made here, but realistically, is Gazprom in a strong enough position to have this sort of attitude? Well, I mean, they are for a brief period of time. Uh, yeah, it's their product, it's their rule, uh, but only as long as Europe needs this gas. And that probably won't be very long, after which they're going to be uh, trying to find customers elsewhere around the world, which will be, be very, very difficult. Uh, so it strikes me as a sort of uh, rather empty rhetoric, actually. Uh, but it's also clear that the timing of these cutbacks of, of gas for Europe is not coincidental. It's obviously linked to the fact that uh, the leaders of the three, uh, three big uh, European countries went to Kiev today and pledged full support for Ukraine in this war. Okay, well, sticking with this idea of energy exports, uh, we just heard, of course, the central bankers saying that Russia needs to move away from this dependence um, on this economic model. How possible is this? How painful would this be for Russia? Well, I think the key point is that if Russia tried to move away from its current sort of energy dependent economic model, it would probably also have to change its political model. Because if you were to actually seriously contemplate to have sort of an entrepreneurship driven, uh, technologically based high tech economy, uh, then uh, the, the well-educated Russians that are going to drive that economy probably wouldn't uh, accept living in an authoritarian government uh, country like, uh, like Russia today. So uh, it is, in my opinion, completely unrealistic to believe that you can just sort of snap your fingers and get rid of the energy dependent uh, Russian economy without also changing the political system. And that's not what I'm hearing from Vladimir Putin. Okay, well, let's uh, also stick with this idea of how realistic uh, these ideas are. There was talk about India and China potentially filling the gap uh, left by the West. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, fill, filling them with what? Uh, what, I mean, if you look at what uh, Russia is importing from the West, it's a lot of consumer goods. It's a lot of high technology, food and other things. Uh, India doesn't supply any of that, uh, with the possible exception of a limited number of, of IT services. China perhaps could do so. But any chi major Chinese company that were to try to do so would actually be subject, almost certainly be subject to Western sanctions. And that would be far Far more economically damaging to these global Chinese firms uh, who have far more to lose in Western markets than they could possibly gain in Russia. So again, this is, in my opinion, completely unrealistic bravado from the Russian authorities. That was Jakob Kierkegaard of the Peterson Institute for International Economics with that great analysis. Thank you.
My pleasure.